and one of us has a lot of hair and the other doesn't have very much hair. So you guys have transitioned from uh, the regime of the hair to the regime of uh, not as much hair. So uh, I think with a lot of hair, what happens is you need to do a lot of thinking and here you need to do a lot of polishing. Uh, AI uh, is uh, similarly endowed to me with his hair, so he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the third of eleventh uh, of March, two thousand twenty-four. We're in the day one, first day, day one of uh, supported job search phase for cohort A. It's our seventh edition of training. Really happy to be here. Um, does anyone want to take a stab? Uh, does anyone want to take a stab at answering why we're here? And I'm going to, I'm actually going to try and tone down my, I'm going to try and sound very North American and use some funny expressions like taking a stab and other sorts of weird, weird expressions, because we're now out of, uh, you're leaving home and you guys are now going out into the world. Uh, you guys, I have uh, one kid who's going to be going out into the world next year. So I have to get ready for this as well. You guys are going out into the world and uh, are going to be leaving the safe confines of, uh, a training environment where if something doesn't work or you're late for an interview, you can't just write to Rodas and be like, you know, I'm sorry, I missed something. Could you please help me out? In the real world, uh, your interviewer may or may not care. So it's now time to uh, get ready for the real world. So on that, um, on that note, I would love to hear from five people uh, and hear what their expectations are of the next three months. We've been together uh, for three months already, and if we consider the application phase, almost four months. So, what are we what are we doing here? What are you guys hoping for for the next uh, three months? Yeah, AI. Let's queue them up, guys. We're going to get five people. So, AI. Hi, Aaron. Good morning. Good morning. Good How are you? <laughs> well, it depends on who you. you are. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah. I know in Ethiopian stretchable time. It's uh, no Ethiopian approximate time is what somebody told me EAT means. Is that is yeah. that right? Uh, yeah, it's almost okay. midday. No, but I mean it's Ethiopian approximate time, not East African time. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. my expectation for the next three months uh, would be, I mean, the the first stage as. Uh, I have read through the uh, document that Roda sent us yesterday. Uh, we have to uh, polish our profiles, basically the LinkedIn, the GitHub, uh, etc. Yeah. Uh, and then okay, so once the wrong request. So don't think about Rodas, Think about you. What What are you hoping for? Right. You're here not for the training. You're here for you. You're here for some reason. So just tell me informally what are you hoping for. Maybe more of an emotional answer. Uh, I would like to get, I would like to get a job, and job. I have Thank to. Put... The best, best summary. <laughs> Show me the money. I want a job. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Anyone else? I'd like. We want four more people. Anyone? Hi, yeah, very well. Okay. Uh, to be honest, like I want to know what it feels like to be rejected in the global day. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I would know what that feels like and you know get ready for that the next yeah. Yes, you guys right. are not gonna be here forever, but like, getting used to it with you around is a great thing ever, so I'm trying to that's an in, get up that's, a, that's an interesting strategy. I think what you're going to do next is when you prepare to get married, you're first going to ask Taylor Swift out, so you know what a global level rejection also sounds like. <laughs> you can ask her on Twitter and then see what she says. you be like, I'm, I bring you back to Addis, I give you the best Shiro, please, Taylor. <laughs> okay. But I gotta have like the old tale of my time or something, like to compensate for it. That's true. If, if, so if you get to choose between Beyonce and Taylor Swift, then Faniel, I think you're you're going for the wrong profession. Then Rodas, we need a new track for Faniel. We need to get away from machine learning engineering. We have to go to 
I don't know, whatever Jay-Z is doing or something. Okay, so you you want to learn what it feels like to get rejected. So I have, I have a follow-up question for you. Rejected uh, when you apply or rejected after you interview? At what level of rejection are you looking for? I think it would be better at the initial stage because like my hopes are not going to be up that much. But I think as I, as I go along, I'm going to be rejected. <laughs> so I'll be even so in a way kind of. <laughs> okay. Guys, you heard it here first. Fanuel likes rejection. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what to say about that. All right, let's go to Mubarak and then to Kirat. Uh, I don't, am I audible? Yeah, very well. What are you expecting? What are you hoping for? Uh, yeah, um, I'm ready to to do to get uh, a job as quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ready for this job searching phase. Okay. All right, Kirat. Good morning. Good morning, Kirat. Uh, it's nice to see you again. Uh, I shaved so because I knew I was. Yeah, <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I have to be honest. I have never been this ner nervous about applying for a job. Uh, I don't know what kind of things build up to this, but yeah, uh, it is there. Uh, I have never applied for a global job, but uh, I also haven't failed at interviews prior to this, so. <laughs> I, that's de definitely something to look for for her too. And I like Fanwell. I like if I if I get rejected, I would like to be re rejected after the interview because then I know what uh, they are looking for and what I should uh, be adjusting or do mm -hmm. like improving. Yeah. So yeah, that's it for me. Okay. Uh, anyone else? We want one more. Abraham? Hey, Aaron. Hi, everyone. Hi. So, uh, so for the coming uh, three months, I'm expecting some guidance from the Ten Academy team and hopefully to land a, a global level job. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. Wonderful. Does anyone else want to go? Otherwise, I have a quick presentation. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through what uh, what we're aiming to get done here. Um, okay. Okay. So um, okay. So I'm going to do the why quickly, and then I'm going to go back. I want to hear how core day was for everyone, and I want to learn a little bit what about what your pre your pre life. Uh, was I'm actually going to make a change in audible here. Um, I'm going to make an audible here and change it on the way. So we're going to do the why, and then we're going to do our goals, and then we're going to go into. I want to hear from everyone. Um, so why? Uh, why are we doing this? Uh, why did we introduce the support a job search phase? So if we take a look at where we were at the, uh, we didn't do this before. Uh, we we started our training in 2017, which was a really long time ago now that I think about it. Um, and we realized that we had a small number of people. We had about 20 people. And we've continued to learn uh, over the years. I would say that we've. I'd like to steal something that somebody in our batch three in 2020 used to say. He's a Ghanaian. He said he's in permanent beta. So we'd like to think of ourselves in a similar way. We realize that the job search process is very difficult in a very different way than the training process. Um, and if you look at the training process, it is linear. You know that if you work harder, you can achieve some output. You have, uh, it's almost continuous. There's a structure, there's a framework that you can work within. The job search process, on the other hand, is there's, you're in the real world. Uh, it's not necessarily linear. You may have a wonderful um, set of materials, things that you've done, prepared for the interview, uh, and it may not always work in the immediate term as you hope for. So it's a much longer frame of thinking that's required, um, and it's emotionally exhausting. 
So we realized that to, in order to uh, improve the transition into work, we had to provide uh, trainees with some support and with a structure, and that's what we're, this is the second time we're doing this. We want to more efficiently harness your energy because we realized that there was a huge variety of uh, energy that was going out there. Some people were really focused and diligent and were working hard. Others were applying for three jobs and waiting, and I don't know exactly what they were doing in the meantime. Um, and so we want to make sure that the expectations, uh, not our expectations per se, but the expectations of the global market, uh, the expectation of a global level employer to hire somebody, that you are aware of what those expectations are. So again, we were doing this because we want to improve your transition into work, uh, because we learned that uh, a little bit of support is required. We realized that working together, we can more efficiently uh, get you to do different things. And the third is, uh, most of you are here on a deferred tuition a deferred tuition plan. And one of the reasons why both Yababel and I, and I believe the entire team are really happy with the ability to offer the deferred tuition payment plan is if we are not successful, then um, we as an organization will have to close and we'll have to stop. So we need to put our money where our mouth is and we have to make sure that for our organization to be sustainable, that you guys are getting work and you're getting paid. So it's not just <clears throat> marketing or lip service, but all of the work that we've done over the past three months and the work that we're going to do over the next three months and the work that you will continue to do afterwards, all of that um, comes together such that we earn our place as uh, one of your previous employers, or uh, one of your previous training, training organizations. So we're not just saying you've taken a certificate from us, but we'd like to work harder to earn uh, our place on your CV. Yep. Are there any questions about why? So I heard some expectations from AI. I was talking about a job. Fanuel was saying he wants a global level rejection. Mubarak wants a job quickly. Karad also wants to get rejected. He's a little bit nervous. And Abraham uh, wants a guidance from team. Are there any other questions on the why? No? OK. So we're going to have to work on um, we're going to have to work on the I guess the interactivity because it's pretty in, uninteractive right now, but that's that's fine. We're going to work on that. Um, so our goals for you in the next three months are we're going to have three different sprints. Each sprint is one month long. The first sprint is going to be slightly different, and then uh, sprint two and sprint three will be the same. Um, so within sprint one, very important for us is you have a track which is chosen so that you're not applying for any job, but we're going to work together to make sure that you know whether you're applying for a Web3 job, a data engineering job, applying for uh, a machine learning engineering job, or a generative AI job. In our experience, and all of this starts from uh, the expectations that you guys came to us with. You told us uh, two things. One is you want a global level job, and the second is you don't want a global level job in three years. You don't want a global level job because you know, your uncle or your aunt has a company. You want to be able to earn your place at that table, and you want it within, um, I would say, within six months of the end of the training. So there's a time factor, and there's a quality factor. Now, we're working here with both, right? So the training that you've gotten up till now will help you to understand, um, will help you to prepare, and we'll talk about that in a moment. You've done all of that preparation. I think we've uh, exposed you to, and I've heard people refer to Yababa when he says, ex exposing you to many different poisons. Um, but we now have to take all of that and to do two things. One is we have to agree, and maybe I, I'd love to hear a show of hands if anyone doesn't agree. Is anyone not on a time budget? Is anyone not interested in uh, starting their job as soon as possible? Is anyone not interested in doing that? If you are not interested, you can make a sign, put your hand up or something, and that's fine. Then I would love to understand and to discuss that. Because otherwise, the program that we've put together is to try and accelerate the process or to make that process, uh, maybe not accelerate, but to make that process as efficient as possible. Um, and our target is that within six months from the end of the three-month job search phase that uh, as many people as possible are working. 
And that's why we want you to choose one track. And then we have to get all of our materials ready. And then we need to figure out within that track which areas you need to improve on. And then we need to get the numbers right. We're going to talk about all that in a second. So in the first sprint, it's really two weeks of preparation, two weeks of job, job applications, and improving our skills throughout. In the second month, uh, it's every we have three weeks out of four. You're going to get a break week in the middle. But every week is going to be the same. It's going to be two days of heavy job applications. It's going to be improving your skills in between. And um, yeah, that's it. And then whenever you get an interview, we're going to be working with you to make sure that you're able to present yourself in the right way. Now, our goal for the within two sprints, so by the end of sprint two, um, you every person has made sufficient progress in key areas required for the track that you have chosen for you to get an interview and you are prepared for the interview. So, for example, um, I know we have people here who will be interested in pursuing data engineering. And there's a percentage of those people whose SQL knowledge is insufficient for the jobs that they're going to be applying for. And that's something that we very simply need to resolve. Because if your SQL knowledge is not up to scratch, um, your likelihood of getting a global level data engineering job becomes much, much, much lower. So I'm going to say that again. We can train you and we can provide you with guidance, but the most important thing that we want to work with you on is identifying where are the gaps that you have and then working with you to close those gaps. Yeah. So our goal is that uh, by the end of month two, about 50% of people have had uh, at least one interview. Now, I don't, that's, the market is what the market is. We haven't uh, had a job placement process in some time, so we need to figure out what the market looks like. Um, there are a lot of moving factors in terms of how people are viewing remote work, um, how people view uh, junior level talent, um, what the market looks like in terms of availability of people with more senior roles. Um, we do have this whole new field, generative AI, which is hot, but we need to figure out exactly how to make that fit in the best way. Um, and in three sprints, we're hoping for first offers and that 80% of trainees have gotten their materials and their knowledge to a point that they're ready to pass their interviews. And so our goal for you at the end of the six month period, that means three months of technical training um, plus the supported job search phase is very simple. Either you have a clear pathway to a job, and that means you know what it is that you should be doing to get the type of job that you want, or you already have a job. Yeah, Nasrallah? What do you mean exactly on improving on, on the specific area you want to specialize in it? Like, is that by giving assignment or asking trainees to do more projects with I, I i don't know exactly how you want to improve or yeah. what is the plan on improving that individual skill so this is what yeah it's a good question um our experience is that most people finish the training and out of the 10 projects nine or 10 projects that you did um there's a couple of things one is that there's a handful of those projects that you're really interested in focusing in on so not all of the projects are equally relevant to you. So for example, if you want to be, if you want to become a data engineer, then the Web3 projects are not, are not the projects that you're going to be talking an interviewer through when you're on the call with MR. So there's a handful of projects that you need to, you want to pick and you want to really do very well. Um, the second thing that we've learned is that most people are not uh, happy or their projects are not done to a level that they feel reflects their capacity. Why is that? It's because they were done in a rush. It's because you were tired. It's because you were doing other things at the same time. And you were busy going for breath. But now we have to choose depth. So my answer to you, Nasrallah, would be, I think, so which track do you want to pursue? Do you have an idea? I do. I do. But I which, just. Uh, which one? And I think I would like to take two tracks, but. Uh, also i need to be realistic about it so oh, and i will i will flip a coin then decide one on it and oh. i'm not joking I flip a coin when i don't know what to do 
Wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to assume because I don't, I can't read your mind. So I'm going to assume that one of them is machine learning engineering. So if you want to do machine learning engineering, then I would like to work with you and to understand what are your strengths and weaknesses as it relates to what industry is looking for. So in our, what we know is that people, industry wants strong Python. It wants reasonable SQL. You need to know some web developments or React or Web2 development, you can say. You need to be strong in using the uh, libraries and frameworks that mm -hmm. exist. You need to have some experience on AWS or another public cloud platform. And you yeah. need to have a demonstrable project. Now, if yeah. you've cut... Allow me, if, allow me to interrupt you. This yeah. is actually what I was looking from you to say it is that um, some of us can do, for example, if the field is uh, MLA engineering, then then we might not have enough resource to be accessible. So the other terms is that accessibility to AWS, um, is it going to be supported by 10X? Um, if it's not, then how individuals should be experimented. It's more about how to make, um, what is exactly the plan on make every, every trainees or make their hand dirty on that specific field as much as we can. So is it resource allocations in it? Um, do we have uh, technical support from it, uh, from specific um, instructors? And uh, do we need add or like, do we have uh, this, uh, daily discussions or can we discuss, it could be even weekly, doesn't matter, on what features we should add, how to improve it and so on and so forth. Like, I just want to know a clear yeah. rub on that more. That. So we're going to be using a format that we call the TPF format and Yvonne, I'll come to you in a second. Um, so those are the tools, platforms, and frameworks that you believe you need in order to get to the level uh, that you want to get to. And that's with that framework, we want uh, that every week, so for, at the start of the month, we want to write down what it is that you need to, uh, where are the gaps that you feel that you have. And then every week we want to, um, I guess, make a plan. No, not I guess, we want to make a plan and then follow up at the end of the week. This is where I need to get to for the month. This is what I want to work on for this week. And at the end of the week, we want to report back. Now, I think your question is, what sort of support will you be getting from us? Um, yes. This is where things get a little bit complicated for us because we are able to be very well reactive. But I think there's usually the people who are active, we're able to support them very easily. The people who are not very active, it becomes very difficult for us to support them. So in terms of human resources and support, we can definitely provide you uh, with tutoring support, with guidance to help you improve your projects um, around access to AWS and access to OpenAI. Uh, we'd have to look at the budget and see how much budget uh, we have left and we have available. Um, I hope or I'm, I believe that we'll be able to find a solution there as well. Yeah, fair enough, I guess. Yeah, so I, it, if it sounds, I think in, let, if you, if we summarize it, we are now moving out of, um, this is where the custom type of support has to come in. And so the, the goal that we have for everyone who is here is the same. We want you to get a job uh, or we want you to have a clear pathway to a job. And I think for me, that if you have a job, that's pretty straightforward. Having a clear pathway to a job means that you have a, honest and clear understanding of where, what is the gap between where you are now and what you need to do in order to, and I'm gonna skip ahead because I find this, um, this helps me to break this down very clearly um, to answer this question. So for us, the number of offers is very straightforward. Yvonne, actually, you know what, Yvonne, go ahead. Sorry, I skipped over. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I just wanted to answer Nasrallah, but you've answered her. I just wanted to tell her that uh, most companies offer uh, practice versions, like AWS have a free tier where you can use any of their resources for like free for a whole year. All you have to do is just link your card and then they'll take one dollar from you and return it to you. That is what I wanted to tell her, but you just answered her. Yeah, I know in many cases people don't have credit cards. So I think that that's something we can work and uh, we can solve one way or another. But Yvonne, thanks, thanks for that input. So the basic equation that we're looking at here is we want people to get an appropriate, 
the number of offers that you get is obviously, uh, so an offer means that the company wants to hire you. So if you have a written offer, even if it's a verbal offer, even if it's an email offer, that means that you have an opportunity to work for the company. Good news. For us, that's a function of the number of interviews that you're getting and the interview success rate. Now, the number of interviews is driven by the quantity of applications and the likelihood of each, uh, so it's actually, uh, there's a mistake here, it's not each job, but each application resulting in an interview. What we found in the past is that there's a huge, uh, a huge variety of expectations of the number of applications that you need to make to get an interview. So I'd like to know from, and that's part of why we're gonna be asking people to track every single application in the 10X system. What, uh, what do you guys think the number, what is, what is the interview success rate, which is the percentage of applications that results uh, in an interview? Or basically how many applications do you need to put out to get an interview? What do you guys think? Two one four one. 20 to one? Yeah. Okay, so we have 20 to one. Somebody is saying 200 to one, so which is 0.5%. You're saying 5%. Somebody else is saying uh, 50 to one, which is 2%. 10 to one is 10%. 100. 1%. So there's there's a pretty big variety here between 10% and 0.5%. 25 to 1, 4%. Anyone else? No? Okay. So in our experience, it ranges uh, 7 to 3. What, what, Aaron, what, I don't understand your math. Is, is that a percent? Seven For seven applications, you get three interviews? Wow, okay. I, I, <laughs> I thought I was an optimistic person, Aaron. Um, that's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, wow. So not, not, so you're 10 applications, you get three interviews, or seven applications and you get three interviews? That's almost 50%. Aaron, do you really think it's almost 50%? Okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> well, so we have a range of from 0.5%, which is 200 to one, to uh, 50%. Okay, our, our information tells us that uh, by and large, it's about 0.5%. So it's about 200 to one. So that's bad news number one. Bad news number two is you guys are about to enter the valley of death where you're going to put out 200 applications in the first month and you're probably not gonna hear anything back because companies are really slow and they, things take a very long time for uh, before anything starts moving. So what we saw is that uh, people work really hard for one week, they work really hard for two weeks, by week three, they're sort of like, well, nothing's happened. By week four, they're like, you know, this is really depressing. Nobody's heard anything. There's one or two uh, good pieces of good news, but not much is happening. But it is about 200 to one. Now for some people, it'll be a little bit lower. And for some people, it'll be a little bit higher. So I wanted to put that out there. The, that's, it's, an, it's about that. Now, it's going to vary depending on the previous experience that you have, uh, your skill level, how good your materials are. But uh, I can say for sure that it's not uh, not fifty percent, it's not four percent, it's not ten percent, and it's probably also not five percent. So I want to stop here and just take some reactions. You guys can just unmute and go ahead. Any reactions? I mean, can we get verbal reactions? Haftam <laughs> was like, yeah, people are putting their thumbs up. Can somebody unmute and can we talk? Makes sense. 
Okay. Abraham? Uh, the, 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 I have a question. Sorry yep. to interrupt. No, no. Um, sometimes, actually, those employees or the recruiter, they don't care about um, what project you did, or they might not be that technical to look into your into your work. Mm -hmm. um, and and some of them really care about experience. So, so so far my knowledge in here is that some of us might not have enough experience in terms of technical side to join the technical market so so that's that's actually a bit concerning because we could say we build this project this side project one side project two because um uh, like most of the 12th week we, we we've been here with 10x is that it's it's actually a side project so that we could have enough experience or we could have enough knowledge and we could talk about it in the meeting or mm -hmm. during the interview but to get to the interview those those recruiters are not technical so they might not have intention to go in details and they might care more about your experience and your educations and all of other those factors so um that itself would, would be uh, quite um a concerning point for for me i don't know about the rest but it is actually a concerning point because you could just say hey i build project a um but they don't care it's like what experience you have so is there mm -hmm. any way for us to tackle that matter yeah and so i think this is where there's a couple of different here we're talking about a few different things at the same time um one is if you don't have real world work experience that's the whole reason why we have this program is can we find people who can basically replace three years of work experience with this program and within 12 months get to the global level? So that's what we're aiming to do. Um, you asked the question about do the technical recruiters, are they going to be asking you technical questions? So remember, the interview process is not a single interview. It's going to be, by and large, uh, between three and five different steps of the interview. Now, step one may be with a non-technical person. But any company who's going to be paying you to do a technical job will also be giving you at least a technical interview and in 80 to 90 percent of cases also a technical challenge. Mm -hmm. My, so my concern is the technical interview. It's, it's actually passing the non-technical recruiter because most of the recruiter are not technical. Let's be realistic. That's not true. I mean, there's different there's different roles, right? So there's the HR person and then there's the person that you'll be working for. Now the person yeah. you'll be working for is also a recruiter. Yeah, but um, but my goal is for me to get through the door first. So how could I get to that technical person who's going to interview me? So that's my concern because the moment I, I I'm able to get through the door, then that's my job to succeed to the rest. But to pass the door, in this case, we have the the recruiters or the that non-technical or HR person. So. And most of them has a certain patterns of hiring. And and based on my research is that they really care about most about internship you did. I I, I don't see that. I don't so I think there's we we will prepare you, but I don't it's true that it, the more experience you have, the easier it is. But that's um, not always where, the what case. type of internship you did, where you did, and so on and so forth. So in, Sorry, Nasrallah, well. I can't hear you anymore. Go ahead. Sorry, I was muted. Um, it's not always the case, but there is a scenario also. You just have to lie down there. Absolutely. So, and this is where we're in the real world, right? So different companies hire in different ways. And so we have, I, we've learned a lot about how different companies hire and what people are asking for. And I think there are commonalities, but uh, you know, you could always get, even if you have, you're fully prepared, you may just get an interviewer who doesn't like you. And that's, that's it. That's unfortunately the case. You, it's not going to be successful. So it is a numbers game to a large extent, right? We can't, it's not always the best person who gets hired. It's not always the most prepared person who gets hired. Um, we have to be ready for that and we have to accept. Uh, so I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Abraham, but before that, I just want to react to Carol's comment. Carol, remember, 200 applications is an interview. It's not an offer. So you need to be ready for five to 600 applications. That's, that's how it goes. 
So I, I'm not here to, we're not, we can't invent a job for you. We're not hiring you ourselves. There's a lot of work that's required to get there. And a lot of this is because, um, yeah, people don't have necessarily have, and this is not true for everyone, but by and large, people don't have a lot of work experience. We're looking for remote roles at the entry level in a fast moving field. So I don't want anyone to think that, uh, and this is why we started this process. We would have people who would put out uh, five applications and they said, you know, one of them must work, so I'm just gonna wait. So we have to make sure that we're uh, dealing in reality here. Abraham? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, uh, so the ratio we see is 200 to one, and I just wanted to know how, uh, what's what's really missing there, or uh, what are we not doing right? Why is, what's the fact that uh, it takes 200 to one to get it, to just, just to land an interview? Because uh, shouldn't we be improving this thing over time? I mean, well, if this is, why do you think that's the wrong? So you, the way you framed the question, you said, what are we doing wrong? Why, why are you assuming that you're doing something wrong? I'm just assuming, I'm just, I'm just assuming if it's from our side, what are we doing wrong? And if it's from the general, from the other side, what, what is going, what is not fitting and why is it taking so much? I just wanted to know the ratio, the reason why the ratio is, is the way it is. What is not so, filling in? So I can't give you a scientific explanation. What I can tell you is that we are, um, I don't, we don't, you're probably not going to be applying for uh, any jobs that ask for zero years of work experience, which many of you have uh, zero to six months of work experience. So you're applying for jobs uh, which are a little bit more experienced than the experience that you have. So I think that's, if we talk about challenges that we're facing or headwinds, that's one headwind. Headwind number two, you're looking for a remote role because the likelihood that somebody hires somebody with no work experience and moves them around the world is quite low. Once you're looking for a remote role, then we are talking about competition um, because for a good job, it means that there are, and you're looking for a good remote technical job um, what we see is that you are now, or you are then open to competition from anywhere in the world. And so you guys are not the only hungry, hardworking people who are out there. And so you will have Indians, Pakistanis, Indonesians, Filipinos, Brazilians, who are also applying for similar roles. Um, in some cases, uh, we also have to look at uh, time zones, which is now becoming more important. Um, so American companies sometimes don't want to hire people who are too far away from their time zone. Now you guys are lined up with the European time zone, which helps, but that's another factor which may be against you. Some companies may also not clearly write that they're not open to remote roles. Um, many people don't want to hire somebody from a country that they've never heard of. So I've heard a number of employers who say, you know what? Um, I like, I've heard of Kenyans, I've heard of Nigerians, that's fine. Ethiopia, I've never heard of, uh, Benin, never heard of. So that's another headwind that you're facing. So all of this means that there may be some roles for which you are qualified for, but the hiring process is not, a, it's not a technical process. I think it's very much more a human driven process. And in that human-driven process, we have to deal with uh, biases that people are going to have, uh, and we're going to have to get around that. And that's where our plan is to have you very prepared, to be very organized and very diligent, and you need to be prepared to get a sufficient number of interviews, and also be prepared when you get that interview to uh, actually pass that interview. Abraham? Okay, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure I, about I think, I think I ruined your day. No, no, it's actually okay. I mean, we have to know what's coming up. Uh, it's better we know it now than we uh, figure it out later. So, 
Um, I'm guessing it's to, due to biases. Uh, can we conduct, can we induce it to that or? No, you know, so if we, if we want to, so if we really wanted to do the right experiment, then we could take your CV and uh, change your name and put you in a different country and see if that made a difference. Um, that's that would be one way to do it. One big headwind that you guys have against you is it is getting more complicated. Um, you guys will become familiar very quickly with what are the different types of remote, right? So at COVID, all of you remember COVID, I'm sure it was people were thinking remote work is any is everything, and anyone can live anywhere, and there are no more offices that will be open. We're now moving to most big companies, uh, and people follow the big companies. So the very big companies, the excuse me, the Amazons of the world, Googles of the world, are moving to a hybrid model, where you have uh, they want people in the office uh, two to three days a week. Now, what does that mean for a fully remote role? It means that if you're not able to be there two or three days a week, because you're not going to be able to be there two or three days a week, then that job is just not open for you. Now, it's very hard to know that uh, for all jobs up front, because it's not always clearly written. So I think that's one, that's the biggest headwind that uh, you will be facing, the fact that you are not physically in the same place uh, as the company or the employer or the contract. And for big companies or even medium-sized companies, there are real reasons, uh, legal reasons, uh, insurance reasons, why they can't necessarily hire somebody who's in a different country. Okay, uh, I guess we'll uh, we'll we'll see. As we go through. <laughs> yeah, but so that's why I want to. And so we'll go to Basilel, But I wanted to make sure that the numbers, uh, based on our experience, and they will change. Uh, it'll be different this time than it was last time. But I want to make sure that we we have a realistic view of the numbers and the amount of effort that it takes. I mean, one thing that I I found I find interesting is that if we, when we started three months ago, if we said you're going to be have to if you're going to be have to work really hard, uh, put in a lot of hours to learn a lot of the technical stuff, then I think mindset wise, most people here are like that sounds great. I know it's difficult to learn coding. I know I can't just do something and pick it up easily, I'm ready to put the work in. When it comes to applying for jobs, I think most people believe that I've now finished the training and I need to be at that point where I can just snap my fingers and the job will come. And there will be times in your career where that may happen, but uh, it's not now because you're still trying to make the jump from your current trajectory into your new trajectory. And so we have to be ready for the next three months I believe that this phase is actually harder than the previous phase. And it's not harder in terms of amount of effort, but it's harder in terms of the emotional effort. And that's why we want to do it together. What is the emotional effort? When you prepare for an interview, you know that you're the right person and you don't get the offer and you don't know why, that's difficult. Of these 200 job applications that we want everyone to put out every month, I would guess that you'll never hear back from a uh, hundred of them, or maybe even more, right? So a yes is great news, a no is perhaps understandable, but it's the ones where they just don't say anything that you kind of don't know. So it's not all bad news. I mean, this is, it's a program, guys, right? It's, we're going to get through this. It's not, uh, I can, once people start to get some interviews, people get ready, we understand where your gaps are, and we go, <laughs> we go through it honestly, you'll see that it is doable. Basila? Uh, yeah, hi. So, question I have for you is, uh, you can hear me, right? I can hear you very well, yeah. Uh, all right, so, I mean, 200 jobs or even 500 could be open. Pay, you know, because we, we are looking for a good job. But when do you know, like, if you, if you, like, what, what would be the number you would put in, where you'd say maybe something is wrong with your CV if you know you do like five hundred and you get nothing, or maybe where you're applying is the problem. 
or or something like that but you know at some point uh maybe there's something you should change something right if so if you do something and it's just not working do you just keep going until like a thousand to two thousand or you know do you take a step back and say okay maybe there's something wrong i'm not getting interviews or something like that yeah, I mean, so that's why we want to make sure that you are not applying and no one's applying for a job. Um, okay, I'd like to make a distinction between a perfect uh, CV, LinkedIn profile, GitHub profile versus an error-free profile. I don't believe that there's a perfect profile, but I've seen a number of profiles which are full of errors. Now, error-free profiles uh, are a definite no-no, and we won't allow you guys to apply with those, right? So we want to put our stamp and say, or not our stamp directly, but we want to make sure that we agree that your materials are good to go before you start applying. Um, but I think your question was a little bit different. Uh, so if your materials are error-free and you're applying and you're not getting a fit, then I would like to sit with you and understand, then we'll also look at which jobs are you applying for, and we should be able to diagnose uh, what could the issue be. It's a long, it's a difficult process, but it's also not a, it's not a magical process. Um, in, in many ways, uh, and you guys are gonna be hearing the dating analogy a lot, um, I think the training process, the technical, three months was a lot like learning to get a six pack or learning to cook where it was much more straightforward uh, if you get the right ingredients and you cook it in the right way there's a bit of variation but it's a question of practice uh, the same is true if, if you want to get a six pack if you want to learn to run a marathon you kind of the body responds in a specific way this is a little bit like dating um, and my answer to you Basilala, would be what would you tell a friend of yours if he or she said, look, you know, I take care of myself, I'm a nice person, I'm friendly, and I'm on all the dating apps, but nobody ever swipes right. So I guess you would talk to the person and just try and figure out, and probably there's nothing really wrong, uh, even if the person thinks that something's wrong, but you would try and then we would have to sit together and look at the information and figure out what's going on. Uh, all right, yeah, I understand, it makes sense. And it's just I, it's just how things are. Well, and I think what in most cases one would have to look at the not just the applications but also the interviews, and that's where uh, one has to be very honest with him or herself. If you get to an interview and you don't perform the way that you expect, what could the reason be? So, if you weren't as strong technically, is it because you were nervous, or are you simply you need to improve your technical proficiency. Um, or if you were very nervous or you weren't able to communicate your, your experience or the technical work that you've done in the right way, then maybe there's a need to improve um, communication skills. And so this is where we have the interview success rate and you need to have both, right? It's the number of interviews times the interview success rate, but the interview success rate in our experience is your technical skill times your communication skills. So if you are an extremely good technical person, but you can't communicate, uh, it's probably not going to end very well for you in terms of that specific interview. And vice versa, if you're an excellent communicator, but your technical skills are very light, um, it's also probably not going to end very well for you. And what I would add on to that is the motivation to get this specific job. And that's what we've seen again and again and again the people who really, really, once they get an interview, if they really want to get that job, then by and large, um, it works out. That, or it, it helps if the other two things are in place. Yeah? Any other questions on in terms of the goals? Okay, so I'm going to go over time, but I want to hear, uh, we don't have everyone here, which is too bad, but I would like to hear from the group, uh, and I'm going to call people out, and I just want you to either unmute, I'm going to do it alphabetically by Gmeet, but I'm going to ask you in 30 seconds uh, how Core Day was for you, which track you think you want and why, and I especially want to hear uh, one challenge you faced in job searching before you came to uh, 10 Academy Intensive Training, because you're here for a reason, 
And so I'd like to know uh, what it was like for you before. So we're going to go alphabetically, Abdul Hamid Musa, Abel, and Abraham Tesfaye. So just unmute. Let's keep it really short, 30 seconds or less. Hi, Arun. Hi, I'm Abdul Hamid. Yeah, so cohort A was intense. <laughs> and um, I was kind of hoping to have a bit less uh, of a, a bit a bit more of a freer schedule uh, since we are now done with the technical part of it and we are now passing to uh, the job search phase but i was surprised to see the schedule in which there is also the same kind of schedule now as uh, past three months so i think it will be continuing to be intensive uh i wanted to uh, delve in the dive into the generative ai field because it's a bit modern and latest, and I hope uh, th there will be lots of job openings for that. And one key challenge I faced in job searching before the academy is really not getting um, the best response from the jobs I was applying on. Uh, I think most of the reason is the location I was uh, at in Ethiopia. So they weren't lo really lo looking for someone uh, where from where I am located at. So this is my uh, my yeah. report. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Adel. All right, uh, thank you very much. So Corte was uh, pretty much insightful. Uh, it made me uh, know myself better and how uh, I kind of perform in a much tough and uh, tense situation. So the track I want to choose is the Gen AI. Uh, b because I believe it's a still uh, a, a weight paint, meaning uh, I can put my mark on the that specific sector as much as I want if I keep on uh, upskilling my skills. So the other thing uh, is the key challenge that I faced before uh, applying for a job before Ten Academy is not finding um, the right job, I believe, because uh, the jobs that I found online was kind of uh, misaligned to, to the things that I want, and they required some technical skills that I uh, used that I hadn't had possessed back then. And I believe that's going to be changing from now. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We'll go to Abraham Tesfaye, Abraham Addis, and then Alexander Mangesha. Uh, okay, uh, so cohort A was uh, was was good, uh, I, though it it was intense and full of challenges and uh, new new insights. I believe it it was a good opportunity for me. I have been able to uh, gain a few ideas and also change a few mindsets uh, using this training program. Uh, as for track uh, placement, I. I believe I, would, I believe I have gained a few interest in generative AI, so I have uh, decided to go with that and uh, pursue uh, the the sector in Gen AI. Uh, one key challenge I have faced before is uh, rejection, uh, and uh, I'm not sure I I'm not sure why it was exactly uh, rejected, but yeah, it was rejected. A few a few of my applications were rejected, so. Uh, that would be it. Okay, thanks. Uh, Ibrahim uh, Addis, Alexander Mangesha, and then Aaron Zinke. Okay, so um, uh, talk uh, the court intensive program, uh, it was very intensive. I got uh, an opportunity to uh, different exposure for different uh, tech stack, uh, which I believe is good. And uh, the track that I'm going to choose is the uh, uh, data engineering because uh, I really love uh, uh, the different uh, the generate the data engineering uh, aspect of the different project. So I'm planning to secure a job on this field. And uh, the different challenge that I have faced in the job searching uh, faith before ten, uh, joining the Ten Academy that uh, uh, so most of the job description they have you know, a lot of requirement that I do not. Uh, fulfilled so it's uh, a bit discouraging to apply for a job and sometimes uh whenever i i i, I got uh, a job that uh, suit me 
uh, sometimes I didn't get the feedback uh, whenever I applied for a different job. So yeah, that's it. Okay, thanks, Alexander, Aaron, and Basilo. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Corte uh, was much more intensive for me, and lastly, it makes me uh, both technical and and then technically enabled in uh, different aspects. So uh, even though it, it was uh, intensive, I like that much. Uh, my track was uh, I chose generative AI. Uh, the reason that I was generative is I'm uh, learn. I have learned much learning uh, before Ten Academy, and I have some knowledge about uh, generative AI. And I searched before selecting the track. I researched uh, about data engineering, generative AI, and the web series. So much of the web talking about generative AI. I have I were not checked for the job openings, uh, but my future may align with generative AI. So I selected generative AI. Uh, the challenges that I face when I try to fail the remote jobs is the first one is rejection that is that where most of the messages are rebating messages uh some uh job openings that uh, were regret to me are uh i recommend some sites to read and uh, uh, ready for the future uh they of their opening is that i were missed and fulfilled in the future i will take that as uh, input and i will correct them. So lastly, I decided to join this program. I think uh, most of the previous rejections are overcome. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, so Aaron, Basilel, and then Birhan. Let's try and keep it uh, okay, 30 go. seconds or less, guys. Uh, it, uh, current uh, it was it's a bit challenging, but it uh, fires me into her. Uh, I, I have selected a generative AI track because uh, I am favorable to search on the machine learning and generative AI parts, and I try to understand the world on research papers, and I try to make a papers. But uh, there is a challenge for me. Uh, I have uh, not uh, strong cognitive. Uh, I have not uh, strong cognitive uh, skills and. Uh, have not fully engaged uh, in the previous projects to uh, to assess all projects or to fulfill our criteria so i try to improve it but it is the challenge for me thank you okay uh, i think it's my turn yeah uh, yeah so I am. I am gonna go with. Uh, Tenet was. Uh, it was. It was really good. Uh, we got to see the different tech stacks. Uh, you got to see just just how generally at least you would start projects and talk about projects. Uh, maybe you didn't implement it in a production grade way, but it was okay. Uh, I learned a lot of things. So very excited. Uh, so next, I I am gonna pursue the generative AI route because simply i don't think i have another option uh we only we, we did like almost five projects with it uh from the nine projects that we did so i think this is the best route and i'm going with that thanks uh Berhan, daniel and then Dirba. okay can you hear me yeah, I think we skipped over Birahan, but we can come back to him. Go ahead, My voice is me, or... yeah, we can. Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, just uh, to like, uh, it's like a testimonial for Corte. Uh, a bit uh, challenging for me. Uh, yeah, uh, at the same time, it is paying uh, and uh, to have the skills that I had and uh, the directions as well. Uh, uh, gen, gen AI role, because I think it is uh, it will stay uh, a little bit. Uh, 
uh, and uh, the challenge that I faced uh, before joining uh, this program, uh, I tried to uh, some some job applications. Uh, uh, somehow they are not uh, applications. Uh, in my opinion, I think it because of they require more uh, just uh, looking uh, portfolio and some other. Uh, uh, I think uh, I am on the right track. Uh, I will I will continue on uh, applying things better, and that's all. Thank you. Okay, thanks. We'll go to Berhan, Diraba, and then to Elias. So Diraba, go ahead. Or Elias, go ahead. I'm audible. I'm not able to hear you if you're speaking. Yeah, I can hear you now. Am I audible now? Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, guys. Uh, for today, was a little bit intensive, but I would like to appreciate the community that made it. Uh, without the, this community, it would have been more <laughs> intensive. It would have been uh, harder than this. And, uh, <clears throat> about the tracks, uh, selection DNA, because we have done more projects on that. And uh, when I see my performance on that pro pro project was much better. Uh, prior to Ten Academy, I have I didn't supply that much. A couple of rejections. But no, now that I know what's the requirement, I would like to appreciate their decency even to re uh, replay their <laughs> rejections. Thank you. Hello? Yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Let's go to Ayaya, Fanuel, and then Haptamu. Hi. Uh, did I call or did I miss you? Uh, well, let's go with AIA first and then Fanuel and then Abtamu. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, Kohere, it was a bit intensive, but it was insightful and fun as, as well. Um, I've, I've learned it a lot. Uh, in the in the technical, also in the non-technical aspects, uh, I, I have learned a lot, so it, it was educational. Uh, for the track, uh, I chose Gen AI. Um, I, I, I try to uh, research and talk to people, but my final decision for Gen AI was and uh, listening to myself uh, because uh, I have been doing <laughs> the, the, the things that doesn't excite me. Uh, I mean, I've, I was just a lecturer, but the, the things I usually like is uh, doing programming, doing something related to software, etc. cetera. So um, I have revised all the, the, the projects, and the most exciting one was Gen AI. So that's why I chose uh, that uh, track. Uh, the key challenge, uh, I haven't really applied that much of uh, online job, and I never had any rejection related to job searching. I always keep uh yeah maybe two or one and failed after interview uh so that there wasn't that kind of or key challenge before the academy but um one uh sorry i'm i'm taking too long maybe i i will i will talk 
about it during the one-to-one -one meeting or stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the background issue. Uh, I know that uh, most of the technical stuff is related to uh, the, the jobs that I applied, but finally they, they kind of reject me because of the, the background. I don't have any certificate or blah, blah. Um, even uh, for visa application, I got the job, I got the offer, uh, but when I go to the uh, embassy, they said you don't have uh, any related document to uh, be a data analyst. So that that's that was kind of a challenge. Uh, other than that, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, I missed Ekram, so I'm sorry for that. So let's do Ekram and then Fanuel. Hello everyone. So like, uh, actually I didn't hear the question correctly because I was having a problem with the network, but like I... It's, the it's pre I'm presenting it right now. So okay. it's the three questions that are on the slide. Okay. Oh, cohort A was, uh, actually it was intensive and challenging, but I get to have a good, I think I have developed a lot of soft skills and also build my profile. Uh, I already have nine projects in my GitHub. It means a lot. So like uh, I coming to the track, I selected generative AI because I'm fascinated to AI. And then one, okay. Uh, I, I have applied to many different internships, not actually a job, but it's an internship to top tech companies. And I have got uh, one interview and a lot of rejections. Uh, maybe like handling the rejection or uh, being ignored by the company, it's a challenge and it's something that we are expecting in this phase also. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Fanuel and Habtamu. Hi again, Ara. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so cover is uh, a bit hard. Probably the hardest thing I've done so far. So that's that. But it also gave me some confidence since I did a lot with the time that I've given and I was given and you know, I performed better than I expected. So that was also a benefit of it. Uh, for the tracks that I chosen, I, I went with Janet Vare. Uh, for one, it's because one of our guest talks, uh, I think it was the former CEO of uh, Adundio, that said that rack systems will be <clears throat> very hard to see this year, and they will be more popular in the coming years. So I think that's the best choice right now. So that's why I went to that. Uh, also, AI yeah, is very interesting to me. So that's another point. So for the key challenges that I faced, I've never really uh, applied in international jobs before, but the ones that I did locally were uh, ghosting for the most part. I mean, I, I go through the interview part and, you know, they offer me something and they ask me what my salary expectation is. And after that, there is nothing, uh, which is kind of nerve wracking. Maybe I said something too high when the salary expectation is that. You use this word that. ghosting. So you said you ghosted the interview process. What does that mean? No, no, no. They, they ghosted. Like, after the interview process, and they said they like me and asked for my... Uh, are you talking about jobs? Or is this, so you, you yeah, went yeah. for an interview and then you never heard anything back. They ghosted you. Yeah, yeah after that, yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm I not think, familiar with this term. I've been married for too long, so I don't know. I think it's something that I saw online when it comes okay. to interviews. They don't really give you the, you know, the rejection letter also. Like they just ghost you. Okay, this makes so sense because there's all, these, the there's all these ads in the city where I live for a dating app and they're talking about ghosting. And I was wondering what what are the what, I didn't know what ghosting had to do with dating. Now I understand. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So for the international one, like I haven't really been uh, applying for them because there is this I don't know fear of mine or some misguided thinking that most of them might be scams or I wouldn't find the right one for myself to apply to. So it's, yeah. it's really you know I don't have that perfect. Okay. The one thing that made me join an academy was so that. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Abtamu, Karad, and then Lillian. 
Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good, mo good morning. Okay. Quart, uh, it was a, a good lesson for me. Uh, I learned it a lot from it. Uh, in the case of uh, work, uh, I went on generative AI because uh, it's prefer for me on understanding some on that areas. Uh, on the case of uh, job searching uh, before I faced the challenge, there is no much related work for what area I want. Uh, this one. Thank you. Sorry, there's no much related work for what? I didn't hear yeah. that. Yes, yes. I, I didn't understand the word that you used. You said there wasn't much related work for? Uh, before uh, uh, I work on online work uh, like uh, transcription uh, and uh, interpretation. I see. Okay. Uh, so uh, there is no um, much work for that uh, for my local language. So uh, this was my um, challenge. Okay. All right. Kirat and then Lilian, please. And then Mektes. Yeah. So yeah court a has been interesting to, to say the least and intensive mm -hmm. so yeah i have learned a lot uh, about myself and about the tech stacks different tech stacks and what it takes to be software engineer uh, it's not easy and for the track uh, it was kind of chosen because for for me because uh, i didn't have a background in tech so I think the Tina Academy uh, website said that uh, if you don't have a background in tech, it's better to choose GNI or data engineering. So I just went with that. Plus, I'm inter interested and I have a lot of portfolio pro projects on that. So it works. Uh, and the key challenge, I haven't really applied. That, for... what, what is that? Is it GNI or data engineering? Yeah, GNI. GNI. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's uh, still confusing. I might need a little bit more help in mm -hmm. cho choosing because I have a lot of co connections uh, with the data engineering mm -hmm. on my LinkedIn. But yeah, we'll see. But uh, just to not to take time, uh, the key challenge, uh, I haven't really applied for a lot of jobs in tech, but uh, when I think on week one, there was a career cha cha challenge that uh, challenged us to look for uh, jobs online and I really found it hard to find one mm -hmm. so that's what I'm looking for as a challenge okay all right Lillian and then Mektes and then Miskino okay uh hello can you hear me very well yeah okay uh hi everyone um, so uh course a um it was a nice experience to be honest it was a bit challenging and intensive i've never had such an intensive treatments in my whole life but it was a um, mindset changer in my opinion i have a different mindset now um, i i believe that i can face any challenges and to do projects um international wide so it was more like a mindset changer as well as i learned some technical stuff and also i got career skills that i need and um i chose the gen ai track uh i was going to choose um data engineering before like all of experiencing and doing projects in Gen AI, but now uh, getting to know how it works and see how vast I'm planning to go is generative AI. And I actually have applied a few remote jobs before, and one of the key challenges is getting replies back. And hopefully this time, I, I think I get a no. And that's it. That's actually, you know, that's a great way to phrase it. So I think the hierarchy is. The worst is hearing nothing, and then getting a no means that a human actually thought about it. So what you'll find is when yeah. you get more experience, you start to get no's, and then you start to get. Uh, so that's I think. Thank you for that contribution. I think that's a good, good way to look at it. Magdas, Miskana, and then Mubarak. Okay. Uh, thank you for the first experience. I think it's certainly to be challenging, and it was so helpful so that. I can really know how um, how 
I am able to resolve like applicable projection, uh, which can be like, which can be found on it uh, in real jobs. That's so helpful. And the track I choose is uh, data engineering. And I still didn't apply for any job uh, till now, but I walked through some like pre-requests for the positions and like for data engineering, there are a lot of uh, tools that we need to be familiar with. So that's gonna be a challenge, maybe. That's what I think. Thanks. Magdas, I have a request for you. Please go to the market and get a better microphone. It's very hard to hear you. If I was interviewing you, it sounds like you are in space. So please invest whatever it costs. Uh, to, but all jokes aside, getting the right audio, this is where sometimes we, in order to save five bucks. So maybe I can use the little one. I could hear you, but I I don't think you should be doing interviews with this audio setup. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe my end piece was not like. It's much better now. Okay, what I was saying yeah. that uh, I didn't still apply for interviews. I, I heard what you said. It was just very, uh, it it wasn't very nice. So I think it's better to. I just wanted to give you that feedback. We're going to be giving you feedback like this because it's important. If you're five people on an interview and we can't, the interviewer can't hear you properly, again, that just reduces your chance of your interview successfully. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Miskana, and then Mubarak, and then Nawal. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, Miskana. Yeah, hi, everyone. So, yeah, cohort A was, was challenging for me. Yeah, I think learning a new concept and uh, developing a project within a week it's a new experience for me but i believe it's i believe it showed me how the work environment looks like and mm -hmm. expected from me and uh, the track i chose uh, i chose generative ai because i think most of the projects uh, we have done on tenex are on gen ai and i think it's good for my profile mm -hmm. uh, and uh, key challenges i face yeah i tried to apply to some of the companies and I think the difficult part is getting interviews. I mean, yeah, yeah most of the companies have uh, AIs that filter our CVs, I guess. So you automatically get rejections. Yeah, I think handling rejections and getting interviews is the most difficult part, I guess. Thank okay. you. Who's a better dancer between you and your brother, Ms. Kano? <laughs> My brother. <laughs> your brother. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, Mubarak and then Nawal and then Radia. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, very well. I thought uh, I'm better uh, than both of them. <laughs> okay, well, then you have you have to demonstrate for us one day. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> and uh, how how was the experience? Uh, it is the best experience uh, I have had uh, since I can say it is more of a practical one. Uh, and it was really, really intentional, uh, to be honest. And I had a lot of uh, projects to showcase. Uh, I don't have that much projects before I joined Tenex, uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, the track I choose is Generative AI. Uh, <laughs> I choose generative AI is, uh, it is interesting uh, and uh, an emerging one. And also we have uh, a lot of uh, projects to show. Uh, so I choose generative AI. And the key challenge uh, I have faced in job searching, I didn't search a global job, uh, a global level job before uh, 10X. And the challenge uh, when it comes to a local uh, market, uh, they ask a lot of uh, skills, like uh, for the front-end uh, role, they ask uh, back-end skills. Uh, so that was uh, really a challenge for us. Uh, and yeah, I think I'm out for this. Okay, let's go to Nawal and then to Rediat and then to uh, Rudolf.
I, I can't hear you. I don't know if you're speaking. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. It sounded like it was like a 1950s radio before. I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, so, um, court, it was uh, actually it was a, b a bit challenging for me, uh, especially uh, committing a lot of hours to work on the project was. Uh, it was not not easy for me, uh, but I got uh, the exposure to work on the real world projects, and uh, currently I'm feeling it worth it. Uh, uh, regarding the career track, I, I chose the generative AI uh, track because uh, we have worked on the on generative AI projects a lot, uh, and it's most likely the uh, uh, right, the good projects to be build generative AI profile. So that's why I chose generative AI track. Uh, regarding the challenges before uh, joining Tain Academy, I have applied to few uh, jobs, but the challenge was uh, the skill set that they were asking for was the skills that I didn't possess. So this the the first challenge. The, uh, another challenge I was facing was is um, they didn't respond respond to, to uh, my application. Yeah, that's what I was facing. Okay, <clears throat> ready ends and then uh, Rudolf and then you have Tahir. So hello everyone. Uh, so as most of uh, them have said, the academy was intensive for me. It was challenging, but I have added a lot of things for myself. I have added a lot on those two years better than I have added for the last year, maybe for better than the last year. Uh, in the career path, I have chosen generative AI, and I feel like it was uh, somehow it was supposed to that I'm doing in the machine learning part, and since it's in uh, kind of a uh, we have many opportunities and many insights. Uh, and for the application, I usually don't apply a lot, but I had almost it. For most of them, I had I have the visualization data, and also some times I I don't apply for jobs that I really want to be part of because I feel like I'm not going to be on these areas, and I'm not there yet to apply for those jobs. For those reasons, I usually don't apply. <clears throat> Radiant, I understood about 30% of what you said. Your audio is really poor. Sorry? I only understood 30% of what you could say. Your audio was very, very poor. Thank you. Thank you. Which parts would I say? The, the, I can't tell you because I missed the 70%. So it's fine. I think I got the core of it. You have to solve your uh, microphone. Could anyone else hear Radiant? Can you put your hand up if you could, if you also had difficulty hearing her? Jared couldn't hear her properly. Anyone else? Is it? So again, we want to prepare you for an interview. If you get on to an interview and you couldn't hear, you can't be heard, uh, it's going to be a career limiting move. I think it's from the way that I hold my phone or from the case. I, I say, I, should I say, should I say, I say? You don't need to say it again, but I need you to find a way to improve your audio because I want we have to make sure you're ready for an interview. And if we can't, if I can't hear you, I am, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm not giving you a job. But if an interviewer can't hear you and you're applying for a remote job, you are not going to pass the uh, recruiter screening because you're not audible. So you, you need to solve it. Get a different microphone, change something. You can do a test with anyone here in the cohort, but you need to be audible. Otherwise, uh, it's not going to work. I'm sorry. I was not supposed to talk. That is why I'm going to solve that. No, but I still can't hear you properly. <laughs> So I, I think you, I don't know, maybe your phone, the speaker or the microphone, there's some problem with your audio. So please uh, take it as feedback. Okay, you have so to solve I, this I'm problem. Not, 
Okay, I will solve that. I'm not in an appropriate place. Now it's much better. Well. Okay. Now it's much Should better. Should I go again? So I what, oh, what did you change? Okay. No, I, I could hear enough, but what did, what did you change? I was using an, an, AirPod, an AirPod, that is why, I think. Ah, okay. A, a real AirPod or a Chinese AirPod? What? A oh, real oh. AirPod or a Chinese AirPod? I was not trying to use it. I'm touching you properly without any problem. That is why. So. Okay. No, but so taking as feedback, it wasn't it wasn't audible before. So we need to solve that. Okay, let's wrap up. Let's go to the last three: Rodolf, Yoftaye, and Yvonne. Okay, hello Arun. Hello everyone. Hi, Can you hear me properly? Hi, Rodolf. Hi, Rodolf. Uh, yes, very well. Okay, good. So I will start with the uh, the last question, if you allow me. So yeah. before joining Ten Academy. Uh, I tried to, to apply for a couple of applications on LinkedIn specifically. I was applying for internship and two jobs. And among them, I got one interview. And after the interview, I didn't get any feedback from the company anymore. And uh, this was a, a great challenge. But at uh, that moment also, I was aware about some of my uh, my lacks, um, my weaknesses, because uh, I didn't have a, a lot of good project on my on on uh, my GitHub to showcase. Uh, I didn't have uh, a lot of uh, experience. I didn't have enough confidence as I have now, even though I'm still working on that. So those are the the things I can relate to as uh, I can I can list as challenges. Now um why uh, how cohort aid was for me uh it was very interesting it was very nice because uh before joining 10 academy my goal was to to build a good a good uh, my skills technical skills and then find a job so the first part was the focus on the the technical one and i can see i can i have today a large view of uh, the job big company in the tech are looking for. So, and today I have a, many, many projects on my GitHub, even though uh, I'm still working on a lot of them because honestly, we, uh, we, we did a lot of projects, but uh, some of us, li like me, um, I didn't complete all my projects. So I still need to work on them. So basically, in general, the the cohort eight was a very good for me, or very good for me compared to what I was in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the second question, what uh, did I choose? I chose the uh, generative AI, mm -hmm. and the reason why I chose generative AI is because so far before joining Ten Academy, I was interested in, in generative AI because of what uh, the before even knowing the existence of open ai in my mind i have <laughs> i have a kind of a project i was thinking about a humanoid mentor a kind of a artificial intelligence that will guide people that will direct people uh to to help them to to become the best version basically this uh, in, in on my in my corner i was thinking something like that but i didn't know that a big mm -hmm. company like OpenAI was already working on something like that. So, so today, uh, when it comes to choose, I say, okay, let me go in this direction because it was something I was, uh, what I was really wanted to do. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. If you need to train your uh, tutor, which is running on OpenAI, if you need to use some of my dad jokes, then you can train uh, your model on my jokes. Please. <laughs> I can give you some of my dad jokes to train your model. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, thanks for talking. Okay. Let's, let's go to your time. Okay. Hello, Arun. Hi. Uh, so, how do you say your name correctly? Yoftahi. Yoftahi. Okay. 
Uh, so as everybody mentioned, the court was also intensive and very interesting for me. And I have uh, gained so much knowledge uh, about uh, different areas. And uh, it helped me both in the technical and non-technical parts. Uh, as uh, for the track I choose, I choose a data engineering track because uh, I feel like that was a project I understood I understood better. better. So I choose that, and it was a bit easier for me, uh, the data engineering project. And uh, for uh, the, ch the challenge I faced during job searching phase, uh, I have nothing to say about that because I have never been in a job interview before. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, Berhan, we'll come to you after Yvonne. Well, um, okay, so... I'm sorry, Berhan. Okay, so let's Berhan. I'm what's um, I'm sorry. I'm I'm just getting out, and it's it's crazy out there. So I I just thought if I can just in interrupt for just a minute, and then yeah. Um, possibly. What what? Where are you? Where is it crazy? <laughs> oh, so I have to buy something. So I'm getting out from where I was. So that's why. <laughs> um, okay. Can I proceed? Sure. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, so for this question, Corte was it was crazy. I was going lunatic in a way, like restless, tired, and a lot of burnouts. But I believe it was all worth it, and it was it was a great experience. I get to build my profile beyond that skills and beyond everything. At the start of the training, you you all say that. We're not gonna give you the knowledge that you're gonna use it forever. We're gonna give you the mentality that you can achieve whatever it is. Even if the new technologies is gonna come, let's say what we have today is not gonna be useful after two or three years, for sure. But we, after 10 Academy, I believe we all do have the mentality that whatever the tech stack is, whatever the technology is, we can learn, adapt, and do some good jobs with, with it. So. Uh, my career, my which track do I pick? In internal, I believe to take the machine learning paths, but I don't know if it's possible to take two paths because, like, everyone is saying generative AI, but I believe everyone is saying generative AI because there is a lot of we heard in some way that there there is a lot of demand in the market with generative AI, so it's also a contributing factor. So, um, if possible, like, if if possible to follow the two tracks. It would, it would be great, but if it gets to become impossible, I would definitely pick uh, machine learning, machine learning engineer. So, um, yeah. for job, for job, for job searching phase, um, I haven't much applied on job searching, but uh, now I do have a good understanding of. Uh, it's not about the number of jobs you apply; it's about um, simple marketing strategy with demand and supply. Meaning wise, you have to customize your profile in a way that fits to the company. Even if uh, even if you perfectly fit, you might not get the job, but optimizations matters the most. Um, the earlier statistics, well, I don't know, you apply to 200 jobs, but how optimal is your profile? How optimal is your, let's say the, in the first 100 applications, we make a lot of mistakes and we do those optimizations and error fixing and a lot of things because Every little details will matter. Uh, so uh, I assume that... I, I would like to disabuse you of that notion. I, I don't think you can optimize your way out of this. You may go from 0.5% uh, to, uh, in the best case we've seen, is 1%. So there's no there's no replacement for just numbers, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Um, and anyways, I'm really, I'm really optimistic and keep this positive energy, whatever it's gonna happen and um yeah so i believe we're gonna have a good time thank you okay all right thanks uh so we'll finish up with yvonne so hello everyone uh to the questions cohort a was really crazy challenging and also kind of good it helped me know how to work smart because here working hard wouldn't cut it yeah and also uh which track I am choosing, I guess I'll go with data engineering, though I am a bit confused between data engineering and machine learning, because 
I know machine learning, I know model training and everything, but machine learning kicks me out when it comes to front-end development. So yeah, that is the issue that I'm having with machine learning. So I chose data engineering because it's a bit, it's a bit good when it comes to me. And then one key challenge I faced during the job search before Ten Academy is um, I was actually getting replies, but some were telling me we are not willing to kind of like relocate you. If we have the money to relocate you, we'll relocate you. Others, especially companies in Kenya, aren't really replying to me. I really don't know why, but other companies are rejecting me and telling me, we are sorry, we, after much consideration, you're not a good fit for this role. Mm -hmm. Yes, so far that has been me until 10 Academy. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks, everyone. So we're almost 40 minutes over, so I apologize for that. Um, I'm going to hand over to Rodas to see she's going to walk you through our expectations for this week. I was going to present the schedule. I think I'm going to skip that. Um, actually, allow me to just take a little bit more of your time before Rodas presents, uh, presents the expectations. Give me a second here. Uh, I want to find the right thing. So the career manual, you have a copy. We're going to be improving it as we go through. Um, uh, because there's a lot that we can improve on it. Um, so I just wanted to walk you guys through this. What are the materials that we're looking for, which in our experience are really important to get right? So first we pick our track. After you pick your track, then we need a set of materials that are ready. So one is your uh, a 50 word summary, which will be right at the top of your CV and your skill listing. So 50 word summary, skill listing, and then we have to make sure that your CV, uh, your and CV and resume are all the same thing. Your CV, your LinkedIn profile, your GitHub profile, they're all error free. So that's what I just wanted to cover. Um, and we're going to be going through that uh, starting today. And we're going to make sure that by the end of this week, you have your track and you have your materials. And we're going to start on this uh, TPF framework, tools, platforms, and frameworks to, uh, so that you can self-evaluate. And we need to figure out what it is that uh, you want to do. But today, by the end of day, we need every single person to be uh, making a proposal on their track. And then we're going to be working with you one by one uh, to make sure that we agree with that track. <clears throat> Any questions before I hand over to Rodas? Because after that, I'm not going to, I'm still here, but I'm not going to, we'll wrap up after that. So this is a good time to ask questions. I know we've covered a lot of material. It's been a very long session. But if we take a step back, I just want to recap. Um, we've gotten this far. I think we've heard that it was a very intense and challenging time. You've had a week off now. And we now, we didn't want to just say that good luck, you guys are ready. Because even if you are ready, the process that you're going to have to go through now is difficult. And working together, we will get there more uh, quickly and more effectively than we will working independently. Let us recall that the two things that we need to do are one, get an interview. And the second is we have to pass the interview. And that leads to us getting the job. Any questions, thoughts, comments, disagreements? Okay, Rodas, over to you. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. Let me present. Uh, Rodas, your audio is really funny. You sound like you're in space. Uh, okay, Let's, let me. It's There's actually a movie from the 80s called Tron. It's actually it's a perfect rendition of Tron. I'm going to post a link here while Rodas is getting her audio sort. Garrett, is that for me or? Yeah, uh, just I, I just had a question about uh, these three months. 
So how intense is it going to be like compared to the last three months? So in our experience, it is, uh, it's a different sort of work. I think that it is emotionally more difficult. Uh, it's a lot more waiting and a lot more, it's a little bit less in your control. So I would say it's like the difference between, as I, I'll use the analogy again, preparing for to run a marathon is what we did in the first three months and preparing uh, to try and find a uh, spouse is these three months. They both may be difficult, but uh, they're difficult in different ways. Brodas, are you there? Okay. So why don't we, so my proposal wrote us is why don't we take, I think we have another session that's coming up. It's been very long. Why don't we stop for now? And then you can take, uh, take this over at the start of the next session. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, works for me. Is okay. it uh, is it working now? Or? Yeah, your your audio is better now. Okay, maybe we should uh, just move on to the next session, and then I'll just take over. Okay, so when did, I think the next session starts right now, or should we give a let's give a five yeah. to ten minute break? Yeah. Okay, so when is the next? So when do you want to start then? So just announce it. In seven minutes. In seven minutes. Okay. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, so one one request for the group. Uh, we're now in the career search phase. My DMs are open. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Tag me in SJS week one or month one. You can DM me as well. So if there's anything small or big, uh, you can reach out to any of us. But uh, I think the last point that I want to just emphasize again, we're in this together. Uh, our We measure our success not by you've got the training, but it's about the job. So thank you, and we'll see you guys in the next sessions. Bye.